Further in the story, God chose a man and his descendants to carry out his plan. And that man was Abraham. His descendants became the nation of Israel and they are known as the Jews. They were chosen to bring forth the Messiah, the person who would crush the head of the serpent and redeem mankind. So God made it a covenant with Abraham known as the Abrahamic covenant. And in this covenant, he made six specific promises. Number one, he promised to make Abram a great nation. Number two, he promised to bless Abram, which is referring to prosperity. Number three, he promised to make Abram's name great. And he has. Abram, or Abraham, as he later became known, God changed his name from Abram because he's going to do this supernatural thing. So he's going to use Yahweh in it, and it's Abraham. So Abraham, he promised to make his name great, and it's true, he has. Abraham is revered by three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Yeah. Number four, he promised to bless those who blessed Abram or Abraham and to curse those who cursed him. Let me tell you, America needs to bless Israel. If we don't bless Israel, God will curse us. Number five, he promised to bless all the families of the earth in Abraham. And this universal uh, blessing finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ, who's the seed of Abraham. We find that in Galatians chapter 3, verse number 16. So Abraham's descendants were chosen to bring forth the Messiah who would redeem people from all nations. So all the nations are going to be blessed because of Abraham. And number six, he promised to give his descendants the land of Israel from the river of Egypt, the Nile, all the way to the river Euphrates up in Iraq and Iran. Yeah. And these promises you can find in chapters 12, 13, 15, and 17 in the book of Genesis. But in this covenant, Abraham and his descendants were obligated to do two things. And let me just say this. This is not the sign of the devil. I have broken and jammed my finger so much as a kid that it hurts me to do this. And I barely do that. All right. So it's easy for me to do this. That's two people. And Oklahoma knows that's the sign of hook em horns, right? You guys do it this way. That's fine. But if you don't know football, you might think differently. But that means two. So in this covenant, Abraham and his descendants were obligated to do two things. Number one, to be perfect. And number two, to walk in the presence of God. In other words, catch this. They were obligated to do what Abraham and Eve, Abraham, I'm sorry, Adam and Eve did before the fall. Let me say that again. They were obligated to do what Adam and Eve did before the fall. The problem is once they fell, they were no longer able to be perfect and walk in the presence of God. So is God telling Abraham and his descendants that they can be like Adam and Eve before the fall? No, no. It's a sign. It's a prophetic sign. So turn to Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 and 2. And you'll see what I'm talking about. About the two obligations. When Abraham was 90 years old and 9, 99. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I'll make my covenant between thee. Between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. And people that's the ultimate goal. To be able to do what Adam and Eve did before they sinned and were banished from the garden. The ultimate go is to walk in the presence of God and to be perfect. But we can't do it. We can't do it. Why? Because of our sin nature. Therefore, we're going to have to go through a transformation. So, knowing this, what is the meta narrative of the Bible? In other words, what is the overarching theme of the Bible? Does anyone know? Well, I'm going to define the meta narrative of the Bible in one sentence, and I'm going to define it in the form of a question. If you're taking notes, write this down. Here it is How do we give back 
to the way it was before the fall so that we can walk in the presence of God and be perfect. People, that's the meta narrative of the Bible. How do we get back to the Garden of Eden, not the place, but the state of being? Where we can walk in the presence of God and be perfect. And people, that's what the Bible is all about. That's the meta narrative of the Bible. How do we get back to Eden? How do we get back to where Adam and Eve were before they sinned? Because if we can't back, get back there, then we can never have a right relationship with God. And that's what the Bible is all about. Yeah. And when you know that, as you go through these individual books, you keep in mind the meta narrative, and it opens up. Oh, this is a portion of it. Oh, this kind of deviates from it, but you need to know this because it plays a role in this overarching theme. 